and till between each row of corn but as you can tell it's too wet and uh it's raining on me right now getting my <laughs> everybody welcome back to the vlog I'm Kevin and oh boy we got more rain last night so my son was supposed to have a baseball tournament uh, this weekend we started playing last night and woke up this morning with a text early saying that the tournament this weekend is canceled we got another inch of rain last night and man it's been raining like an inch every couple days which you know it's good for good for a lot of things but it it can uh, put some problems on uh, some plans that we had and things going on but anyways I just wanted to start this video off today uh, it's early in the morning I don't know if you guys can see this or not all this uh, fog lifting from the creek back behind me um, I got a new camera yesterday so bear with me as I learn this thing you know how technology is uh, got one of the new Canon M50s and I've still got a lot to learn on this thing it's a big step up from what I had before and uh, hopefully I can uh, still make my videos just the same as before, maybe better quality. I don't know if you want to see this rough face or not, but uh, we're going to learn it and uh, bear with me. Hopefully everything is uh, good enough. But I uh, just wanted to show you guys this behind me. This is what it looks like here at Hidden Heights Farm just about every morning, which it's kind of cool this morning. Usually it's in the uh, oh, 60s, 70s in the morning time in May. And yesterday morning we had near record lows. It was 42 degrees yesterday morning. So don't got a lot of stuff planned today. It's Mother's Day tomorrow. So happy Mother's Day to everybody watching here that are moms or grandmas or aunts. Hope you guys enjoy the day. I've got a little something to talk to you guys about on one of the projects that I uh, showed you guys in some of my videos here in the past. But we'll get to that in a minute. I don't know if you can see these goats behind me. I don't know how this focus does on the, yeah, the other way. So I don't know if you guys can see these goats behind me or not because it looks like it's focused in on me more. But let me uh, turn this camera around and I will zoom in on the goats grazing this morning. Alright guys, so a couple weeks back I planted some corn, uh, I think it was 13 days ago, and this stuff is about, oh, two to three inches tall now, but as you can see right here behind me, we got standing water in the garden. So this year all we did is plant corn in this uh, garden that I till up with the tractor, and uh, so we got, I don't know, I think I got nine rows of corn or something, but anyways, I was going to get some uh i think some 3200 just straight nitrogen fertilizer and throw in here and then till it in and till between each row of corn but as you can tell it's too wet 
and uh, it's raining on me right now getting my new camera wet a little bit just kind of sprinkling so uh, uh, I'll get to the main point of this video I just wanted to show you guys the uh, garden that's not gonna get tended to this weekend all right guys so I just wanted to shoot this quick video today because I have some good news for the people that left me some uh, comments and sent me some messages asking me a question about the irrigation that I installed here in the raised bed garden so www.dripworks.com is where I purchased these supplies and I got tons of feedback on my videos uh, messages and comments on people wanting to know where I got it and if I had if I had any kind of coupon code if I was affiliated with the company I'm not affiliated with them but I did reach out to them and told them that I had a lot of viewers that was very interested in their products and uh, so talking back and forth with their marketing department they decided to issue Hidden Heights Farm a 15% off any purchase $99 or more so for those of you that was interested uh, I talked to them and I got a code I'll put it down below right here on the screen and I will also put it down in the description uh, dripworks.com enter that code and any purchase over $99 or more you'll save 15% um, and they might have free shipping too I'm not sure but man this stuff this product is really good I'll show you guys one more time I know you're probably sick of seeing it and I still have more work to do I oh man so all this right here is going to be covered in landscape fabric and then we're going to put mulch on top of that I'm not done installing all the uh, quarter inch line that runs down through the bed so pretty much you just get a tool and you punch the main line you install your quarter inch line and that's where you can put your little emitters that drip water or sprayers or whatever you want to do it depends what kind of plants you have really uh, and some of these beds I have just uh, drip tube drip tape so anyways guys I wanted to make this video today to share that news with you because man I probably had 30 people asking you know where did you get that at I've never seen anything like it which I was really surprised because I've always seen it, but I just figured a lot of people knew more about it, which I really didn't either until I'd done some research and watched some YouTube videos. So let me show you guys one more time, because I had a lot of people interested, so bear with me. And I pretty much just pieced this kit together. You can go online and buy their kits that pretty much have everything you need. But every garden is different, and raised beds are different. So on this one here, it's not complete, of course. This is where the main line comes in. Your water hose comes in here and you twist that on and every one of these raised beds has a shutoff valve so if you need to work on something you can turn the water off here if you have it on and on this one here I just have one quarter inch hose with these emitters drop that every plant and then you come off your main line and come over here on the second rung and over here I got the drip tape so you turn it on and it just drips every six or eight inches there is holes where it just drips water and I think this is going to be the best bet for this raised bed this is squash and zucchini you got a little squash growing already can't wait to eat those and of course we got the valve for the shut off here too same thing over here except these have the emitters these are tomato beds and my wife has some sunflowers planted here and there and of course there's some grass seed that's growing that needs to be picked out so guys this is very easy to install I installed it I'm not a plumber or anything else this is our green beans and our cucumbers and we have just two rows of the drip tape so it's gonna drip every six or eight inches as well here and it curves over here and comes around and I need to redo this here so when you guys order your kit if you want to keep it nice and straight and make it look good like this here not like that but get these little um, clips that nail down if you have a wood raised bed you can use this type they do sell them on the site and I didn't buy them on the site I ended up getting these at Lowe's <clears throat> so this is gonna work out very well I need to finish running all my quarter inch lines we've just been busy with everything else and uh, as you can see it's raining right now it's been raining like every other day I haven't had to water this garden hardly at all just when I first planted the seeds and the plants so it hasn't been a real rush to get all that irrigation installed but let me show you something that does irritate me so planted up some 4x4 raised beds over here by the shed and some varmint has been coming in at night 
and eating up my uh, sugar snap peas. And I got this cage around here, but whatever it is has to be small enough to hop down in here inside these trellis cages that I made. Because what they're doing, they're getting down. What they're doing is they're getting down inside here and eating all the plants inside. But why are they leaving these on the outside? I don't understand. So whatever varmint it is has <laughs> ate half of the crop of the sugar snap peas. So I'm going to have to go through my seeds and probably plant some more and figure out what it is eating this. I might put some of that 2x4 wire around here to try to keep them out. But the beets are still doing good. Hopefully the varmint don't move on to this bed. But if they do, I don't know. Might have to trap him and relocate him out in the pasture somewhere. All right, so it's starting to rain and uh got another addition to the farm I need to show you guys. So we'll walk out to the shop real quick. All right guys, so I'm out here in the shop. Don't mind the mess here behind me, but uh I'm out here at the chicken and the turkey brooder and these guys are growing so quick, but let me show you the new addition that hatched yesterday. All right guys, you see this little guy here is a new Black Spanish turkey. Let's get him out here in the light. It's kind of dark in here. All right, guys. So I think this might be the last turkey that we get hatched of the year. So now we got three full blood Spanish turkeys and one half. I think it's half royal palm and black Spanish. So we got four of these baby turkeys hatched and then three of the white turkeys, which Dutch is getting one of those. But I just wanted to show you guys this little dude. They, these things grow fast. You've seen the ones in the rabbit hutch I have over there and by the chicken coop. They're growing pretty quickly so put this guy up. It's raining pretty good now so alright guys so I'm here in the shop where I got some of my seeds started and I wanted to talk about something I'm kind of excited about this year. So Cherokee Nation does a uh, seed bank of some of the native seeds that the Cherokees back when they're at their homelands out in uh, Georgia Tennessee, North Carolina area. They saved a bunch of seeds years and years ago and they just kept uh, sharing them and letting people grow crops with them and they would collect the seeds and kind of put them in a vault and keep them safe so they would never run out of these seeds. So they have a pretty good uh, quantity of different types of plants and flowers and stuff that they, uh, every year they have what they call Cherokee Nation Seed Bank and you register for it if you're a member of the tribe if you're a citizen of the tribe, you can register for it and they will send you out two different seeds that you select. And this year, I got uh, native tobacco and some Cherokee greasy wax beans, which are kind of like green beans. I'm, I've never actually eaten them, but I've seen videos and such and they look pretty interesting. But let me show you some of this to native tobacco that we got growing. So these two plants right here is native tobacco. A couple of the seeds that I planted came up. I don't, not sure what we're gonna do with it, but I thought it was pretty interesting to grow and uh, maybe do something with it. These goats are like piranhas when they see fresh green leaves, they go crazy. They love eating the leaves. Nope, where'd it go? I don't know if you guys can see that daddy bluebird right there, but the two bluebird babies that was left in the nesting box, 
Uh, if you've seen the video of the black snake that was trying to eat them, that nesting box right there, they finally flew off and I seen them the other day in some of these trees. So now Mama Bluebird can lay some new eggs in there and start a new family and hopefully Mr. Black Snake will stay gone. Hey Daisy, what do you know? Hmm? Where's your goats at? Here comes the fat mamas. These girls are getting closer and closer. Now they're about three weeks out from the first one having their kids. And these are first time mamas, so I don't expect them to have twins. Uh, I think some of them are going to have twins because they're looking pretty wide, but some of them are not looking as wide as others, so they're probably just going to have singles. And the fattest one, you can see how wide she is trailing far behind. I don't know, she might have triplets or she's really close to having her twins. She's looking good though. Alright guys, so I'm out here in the uh, Spanish goats pasture and I want to talk about something that I'm not too proud of. And you know, everything's not uh, always good here on the farm. Some things are bad and uh, sometimes you have to take different measures to uh, solve problems. So you guys, any of you guys know what this is not here? Not. Not Daisy, of course, but right here. Let me show you guys. Does anybody know what this plant is right here? This is a thistle, and uh, that is not good. And let me zoom in over here. So you can see something has killed the grass. Well, that something is a spray that I sprayed on these thistles. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not too proud of it because we have bees here and we try to not spray any chemicals and such here on the farm. But, so these thistles were starting to grow and their second year they grow a stalk and it's a pretty purple looking flower. And what happens is that stalk on their second year of growth releases seeds all over your pasture, just thousands of them. And if one plant makes it to where it seeds itself, man, your pasture will get taken over with these uh, thistles. So I had to spray these things. There's just so many this year. Uh, you know, you can have neighbors way down the road if those thistles blow into your pasture and you don't keep it mowed regularly and all that, they're gonna grow. So we had to do something before they took over our pasture because the goats will not eat them. I don't know why they eat everything else that's thorny and you know, that don't look really good to eat, they eat them. But for some reason they're not eating these thistles. So I went ahead and sprayed them because we can't let them take over our pasture. And let me walk over here to the winter pasture and show you guys some thistles that are about to bloom that I have not been able to spray yet. And it won't do me any good to spray them right now because of the rain. The rain will just wash the spray down. So here's what they look like when they're fixing to bloom, which I'll probably just dig these up. This is very bad. This is a nuisance plant. So you can see all the, you can see all the thorns on them. And those little bulbs up top are the flowers that pop out and they're really pretty purple and the bees don't really pollinate them that I know of but if you spray them before the flowers come you're not gonna get any kind of chemicals on butterflies or bees or any kind of pollinators so you just got to be very careful spraying these things so I just wanted to show you guys that because everything we do here we try to keep it real for you guys we don't want to hide anything good or bad so that's that's some of the bad stuff that you're gonna see uh, I don't think it's going to affect the bees because it's not on any flowers or anything. So it's just, you know, it's not good to spray chemicals on anything. But on something like this, when it risks taking over your whole pasture, you have to take measures. So Daisy, right here by my side still. It's starting to rain a little more. So I probably need to get this camera inside and dry it off. But you guys got anything to say? Oh, wait, I think he wants to speak right here. You got anything to say, sir? Yep, just always moving your mouth, but nothing's coming out. Alright guys, so one more thing before I go. So I got some more exciting news. The eggs, the quail eggs we got from Dutch on our trade for the baby turkey. Today is day 17 and them suckers are hatching right now in the garage. 
I'm not going to show you guys. I'm going to save that for tomorrow's video. But I got to get their brooder set up and ready to go. Put them back in the shop. Uh, they're so small, I'm not going to put them in the same brooder with the chickens and the turkeys because I don't want them to get crushed. But stay tuned. Hopefully tomorrow I'll post that video. We'll get the brooder set up and get the baby quail moved over into the shop. And uh, hopefully we can hatch out. So far there's only two hatch. I just started hatching this morning. But hopefully we can get pretty good hatch out of there. I'm not sure. Dutch, hopefully you didn't trade me no uh, non-fertile eggs. So far I got two, but I think I think we'll get a pretty good hatch anyways. We'll see. These are all these are all new mamas that he has, so I'm not sure if they were all fertile or not. I think he had a pretty good hatch rate. I don't know if he had half or not, but we'll see tomorrow on that video. But guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you didn't think this video was too boring today. I really wanted to get that promo code out to the subscribers and everyone that was messaging me on if I had a coupon code or anything for that uh, dripworks.com site because they were wanting to order some supplies for their raised bed and get their irrigation installed. So check the code out if you guys are interested in ordering from dripworks.com on your raised bed uh, irrigation or just your garden irrigation. They got all kinds of stuff. Go check them out. And uh, guys, it's raining. So we'll see you next time.